الحمد لله الحمد لله وقفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على اشرف الانبياء والمرسلين وعلى اله واصحابه وازواجه وذرياته اجمعين اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقضى ربك الا تعبدوا الا اياه وبالوالدين احسانا اما يبلغ ان عندك الكبر احدهما او كلاهما فلا تقل لهما اف فلا تقل لهما اف ولا تنهرهما وقل لهما قولا كريما واخفض لهما جناح الظل من الرحمة وقل رب ارحمهما كما ربياني صغيرا ربكم اعلم بما في نفوسكم ان تكونوا صالحين فانه كان للاوابين غفورا صدق الله مولانا العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن ولا ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته we were in the month of rajab last week and on the 27th of rajab an amazing miracle happened some 1400 years ago known as the miraj the ascension of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we talked about that last week and also in our miraj an nabi night event here in masjid al shifa on monday I don't want to go over that part of the Mi'raj, but I hope what it showed us is what an amazing miracle it is, incredible. But something that, of course, frustrates our imagination and makes us feel, wow, how could this have happened, okay? It makes us reflect and think. And Alama Muhammad Iqbal, rahmatullahi ta'ala, one of the great Muslim philosophers of the 20th century, said something very beautiful in a, in a couplet. He said that, Miraje Mustafa se mila hai mujhe ye sabak. Miraje Mustafa se mila hai mujhe ye sabak. Ke hai aalam mein bashariyat ki zad mein gardum. He says that, you know, from the ascension of the selected one, I have learnt a lesson and the lesson is this that the universe is within the grasp of human beings the universe is alam e bashriyat ki zad mein hai gardum you know this vast universe is within the grasp of humanity and i hope you know this is of course iqbal's positive thinking okay even something that frustrates a philosopher to imagine and to think the how the miraj could have happened he comes out with this positivity and of course you know as science advances our knowledge of physics and the astronomy advances we begin to now see possibilities of how miraj could have happened through those spiritual a stairways of mi'raj allah is zul ma'arij the one who has these amazing uh, spiritual stairways and there is another concept the quran uses of hubuk okay interesting concept the quran uses hubuk hubuk is the ripples you know when you throw a pebble into the pond what happens you get these ripples okay and of course ripples are waves all right and so the idea is that this universe has ripples 
meaning, you know, this is a really complex idea, and Shai perhaps will know about the two ideas. You know, there is matter is either quantum, you know, particle, or it is a wave. Okay. And, of course, there is, nobody knows which one is true. The, the, the reality might be something in between them, yeah, no? But this idea of hubuk, the Quran talks about, the ripples in the, in the heavens, which are used by the angels and the souls to move. <laughs> you already get, begin to get that whole idea of how it could have happened. Anyway, the, as exciting and wonderful that idea is, the more important point about Mi'raj al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa is that Rasulullah sallallahu was given some amazing commandments. He was given what we call a new world order. A new? World order. Yes, yes. You know, a lot of big empires claim that they have a world order, okay? China has its own world order. Putin has his own world order. The Americans and the British have their own world order. And the idea is how can we impose this on others, sadly. I mean, that's the whole point. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has his unique world order. And that world order is actually what the Qur'an is, what's contained in this. And we get glimpses of this. This is Surah Al-Isra. And in this Surah, there are 10 commandments, you know, from verse 22 to 36. There are 10 commandments. I do urge you, please, when you go home, do read from verse 22 to 26 about these 10 new commandments. 10? Now, the idea of 10 commandments is a very old one. Uh, Ibrahim salam, had them. Then we know that the Torah of Musa salam, had it. And the Jews are very familiar with the 10 commandments. The Christians took those 10 commandments wholesale. Sale, okay, and they adopted them as their, um, also their world order as well. But by announcing these ten commandments in the on the arsh and giving it to the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, it was saying, well, you are going to go back now, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, with this new world order. Okay, so I want to just share with you what are those amazing. <laughs> Ten Commandments, okay, and how they should really help us to live an amazing life of Mi'raj. Life of? Mi'raj. Yes, so our life becomes a, a, a celestial um, a, a spiritual journey like that of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So it begins with وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ عَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ Three things to do, seven things to avoid, okay? What are the three things that we must do, and seven things that we should avoid. The three things that we should do, first and foremost, is to worship Allah, is to become the servants of Allah, is to dedicate and submit ourselves whole, wholly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aslim qala aslam tu li rabbil alameen. Allah said, surrender, submit, dedicate yourselves. And he said, I have dedicated myself, okay? And so that is what we need to do. That's first and foremost, worship. And this is why the biggest and the greatest and most important order that Allah gave to the Prophet was what? The five daily prayers. Because this is the means by which you connect with Allah. Uh, you know, and show and express your servanthood and the fact that, you know, I truly I'm dedicated to my Lord. I truly believe in him. And God is very keen to see this. You know, he wants to see this. He wants his servants to express their uh, servanthood and to, uh, to actually realize and recognize. And this is why the Sufia actually used not the word knowledge, but they use the word ma'rifa. The word ma'rifa, gnosis, you know, which is about recognizing uh, and, 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 and also having an experience of that in the heart as well. So it's something to be experienced. It is something, you know, that you know of and something you truly, you know, uh, subscribe to. That is, you know, what marfa is. And so the whole point is for us to have the marfa of Allah. The marfa, this recognition of this grand supreme ruler of the universe, okay? And submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the first, foremost, 
And so, and the way we express that is through the, that, th those five daily prayers. If we don't do that, you know, you know, some people uh, and some of the Sahaba would go as far as saying, well, that is the boundary, the Salah is the boundary between the believer and the disbeliever, between the Kafir and a Muslim. That is how important it is, you know. We have to express this um, um, servanthood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The next very important duty is that, what should we do? You know, Allah says here, we, you should, um, uh, care for your parents. Care for your parents. So first, care for Allah. That's really interesting. Allah wants you to care for him. Which is a really interesting idea, you know, this marfa is a, in a way that Allah wants and, and, and care has this idea of recognizing you do not care for somebody if you don't actually like them, recognize their needs and love them, yeah, no? okay? So that is why, you know, we say that we need to care for Allah, okay? And, and, and the, the idea of taqwa, you know, ittaqullah and this whole idea of guarding yourself, uh, you know, from disobeying and violating the commandments of Allah is all about, you know, caring for this loving Lord. So, care for Allah, care for your parents. And thirdly, care for those who are needy human beings. All right? So here are the three positive do's, you know, and I often talk about them, so I'm not going to delve on them too long. But the next seven things from which Allah is um, which Allah is making forbidden and is, is telling us to avoid are mentioned from, you know, from, uh, from here, verse 26. وَلَا تُبَذِّرْ إِنَّ الْمُبَذِّرِينَ كَانُوا إِخْوَانَ الشَّيَاطِينَ So Allah says, you've got to take care of your parents, you've got to take care of the needy human beings. And the seven deadly sins, now, this idea of seven deadly sins is a very, you know, you might say, well, that's a very Christian idea. Uh, you know, it's a very popular amongst the medieval uh, Christian theologians, and you see it, the seven deadly sins. Of course, it's not a Christian idea, okay? It's a uh, very Islamic idea. These are deadly sins. And these are things that are mubiqat. The, 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 the hadith calls them mubiqat. So in, in hadith literature, we have this idea of mubiqat the deadly sins, okay? The Prophet talks about those deadly sins, yeah? So it's not a, a holy, a Christian idea, yeah? Now that, uh, you know, when we say seven deadly sins that we're copying something from the Christians, it's actually a very Islamic, spiritual idea of seven deadly sins. So what are these seven deadly sins that the Quran mentions here? You know, this is just the, it's actually from the verse 26 onwards that the sins are talked about. Here, the Quran is talking about the first two, worship of Allah and caring for parents. The third one, Wa'atizil Qurba, is in the next verse. And then after that is Wala Tubazir, verse 26 onwards to verse uh, 36 is really about the seven deadly sins. And I'm gonna tell you what those seven deadly sins are. And each one of them is actually not just one sin, but a composite of many, many sins, okay? If anybody's seen my book, Seven Steps to Moral Intelligence, in that I've talked about, for example, arrogance, taqabbur. And taqabbur is, 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 has at least, yeah, in, in my book, I, I talk about at least 20 uh, branches of taqabbur, okay? How the Qabbur is manifested in, in, in 20 different ways. And each one of these sins is manifested in many, many ways. So these are, this is really effectively a summary of all the evils that we human beings can fall into so easily. These are the seven traps, you know, in which we can very easily fall into. Uh, and, 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 and they have many other manifestations, many other ways of expressing themselves, okay? So let's just talk first, you know, Allah says, don't kill. Okay, so that's the first most important, la taqtulu, do not kill. And that also is in the uh, Ten Commandments, uh, you know, do, do not kill, okay? So, not to kill. What that means is, you know, we regard all human beings and their blood sacred, which means, you know, sacrosanct. You cannot, you know, uh, you, you cannot hurt, you cannot harm, uh, never mind killing, taking somebody's life, 
That is a divine gift, and no one has that right. Okay? And second one is, don't waste. Don't waste. What does that mean, don't waste? Don't squander. Allah says, don't squander because those who squander are the brothers of shaitan. Okay? Uh, already, you know, uh, denouncing it as a shaitanic act. Okay? Uh, and again, sadly, you know, we have to say that our modern society uh, is, is a... Um, is, is engrossed and, 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 and badly uh, squanderer, is, is one of the biggest squanderer and a waster, okay? From government to private industry uh, to charities, everywhere we see this squandering going on at a huge level, Jen, seriously. You know, uh, people have calculated, you know, those who do uh, research into government expenses that, you know, they could live with 10% of what they have. <laughs> you know, 90% is wasted, all right? In all sorts of ways, yeah, no? okay? So, um, and, and uh, so Allah says, in, and, and wh why is that important? Because when you are wasting, you think you need more, and in, or in order to get more, you're going to commit lots of injustices. You're going to be nasty to so many people because you believe that I need to have so many trillion pounds in my Treasure, treasury in order to do this. And you're going to do everything. You don't care about it. Seriously, you know, we know that. Governments have done this. Uh, and, and just like all of us, sadly, will do that. If we think that we have these massive needs, therefore, we're going to work for those massive needs unnecessarily. Okay, so, and, and this then becomes a death of spirituality. Okay, you, do, you, have no, you no longer have time for your spirituality. You have no time to look at your moral and inner health. You don't have time for yourself. All you are thinking about is, how do I get that big budget of mine? How do I get that big target of mine? How do I meet that big target of mine so that I can go ahead? This is Mubazzeri. You know, they were talking about, um, you know, with all these uh, g gas prices and electric prices rising. Um, you know, they were talking about uh, how when the, you know, when that big tsunami happened in Japan and one of the nuclear uh, plants was badly affected. So he said, you know, they, they said that, uh, you know, within weeks they were able to reduce their electric consumption by 20%. And they were okay, without any harm of any kind, okay? So, you know, the, the, this idea of وَلَا تُبَزِّرْ إِنَّ الْمُبَزِّرِينَ كَانُوا إِخْوَانَ الشَّيَاطِينَ it's really fundamental to spirituality, okay? Those uh, who, uh, because, you know, we are going to be looking for more and more, and in order to get more and more, you need to spend more and more time for it. You will then, what are you going to take that time off? Oh, Dr. Ito Sama, it's not going to be done. It's not going to be done. It's not going to be done. It's not going Why bother? Come we do it. Give some time. No, why do it? You know, because, I've got to do this, I've got to do that. Are you with it? So this is, what does Allah say? Inna al kanu ikhwan These mubazzirs are the brothers of shaitan. Okay? Now they are following the shaitan's way. Completely and utterly lost in that capital system. Crass capitalism effectively. That is what it leads to. Squandering and wastage leads to jana. So. Uh, if you want to really understand more about this, I, 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 I translated a wonderful fatwa of Ala Hazrat over 40 pages, okay? And it really is an amazing fatwa on how to avoid extravagance. Uh, and it really is, a, if you want to read that and understand what extravagance is, how we can avoid it, and what different formats it takes and blinds us, you know, we need to read that, yeah, no? The second one is, the one which follows from this, do not be miserly. Okay, on the one hand, don't be a squanderer and waster. On the other hand, don't be a miser. Bakhil. Miser is somebody who wants to keep things to himself. All right? He doesn't want to share with others. That is a miser. Uh, you know, Bakhil, Kamina, you know, who thinks just very lowly. You know, he doesn't want to share the gift that Allah has given him. He thinks so little, okay, 
of them and he, 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 he just wants to keep it to himself, hasn't got that heart to share with others. And, and you know, here the Quran uses the word, you know, like tying your neck, uh, tying your hands to the neck. I'm not giving, okay? Completely closed off to the world here. Yeah, no? So that's what's to be avoided. Then the next thing is don't commit adultery. Again, you know, when we talk about adultery, you know, it covers all that industry of entertainment, pornography, of lewdness, of fashion. Can you see how big that, that is? It's a very massive field, okay? It's not just, wala taqrabu zina. And it's really interesting. The Quran doesn't say, don't commit zina. It says, don't even go near it. Don't even think about it. In other words, all those paths and all those ways and all those means that lead to it have to be abandoned are haram yeah, no? and that is where all these means you know that sadly again which is, is a big part of this society i hope you can see why these are deadly sins and they're not just one they're a whole big block of many many diseases of the heart and the mind yeah, no? they really do destroy the human heart and mind yeah, no? and then the quran says don't cheat don't be dishonest now that again, you know, we don't have to talk about what that is and who does that. Uh, you know, even the wonderful governments do it. And even the wonderful central government banks do this cheating. You know, the LIBOR case in, with the central bank was a big one, okay? How they fixed, uh, you know, uh, the interest rates or how they, it's, I, I don't understand, but all I know is LIBOR case was done by the central bank of this country, yeah, no? and, and, uh, and, and they allowed other banks to cheat effectively, you know, and that's what led to that 2008 big financial crash as well. Okay? So, you know, cheating and dishonesty, again, is something that destroys your soul, your heart, and your mind. It okay? takes away that peace from you, yeah, no? and certainly takes away the spirituality and your character from you, yeah, no? And then, uh, This is a really interesting one. Don't be blind followers. Don't be? Blind followers. Yes, don't follow blindly. Meaning, come on, start using your nodder. Start using your eyes and your brain that Allah has given you so that, you know, you, you, you don't, so people can't mislead you. Nowadays, you know, we are misled by our social media so <laughs> badly and we just, you know, you get a message and within seconds you pass it on without even thinking. This is trash, this is wrong, you know, this is... And, you know, we keep on becoming these... Uh, so we become imitators, all right? The Qur'an, this is why the Qur'an keeps on saying, you know, afala ta'akilun, don't you understand? Afala tadadabbarun, don't you think deeply? Don't you do the fakur? Don't you reflect? And so on. You know, it keeps on reminding us to use our akal jana. No? And then it says, uh, don't be arrogant. Don't be. And as I said, arrogance isn't just, well, what is Putin doing? Well, that's belligerence. And that's war, killing. Okay? So it came, comes from what? The whole concept of arrogance. Seriously. It comes from that bad attitude of Arrogance of being big-headed. Who are these little things? <laughs> Let's get rid of them. That, that's, that's what he speaks and talks about, okay? A lot of, you know, colonialism is about that. Okay? Who are these little things? Yeah, no? We can take over them. You know, we can teach them a lesson, okay? And that is sadly what colonial mind does, yeah? No? It's arrogant mind that leads to all kinds of evils, from slavery to... T uh, you know, usurping people's lands, uh, you know, and say so what happened. We, we Muslims have just been through it, you know. What happened in Afghanistan, what happened in Iraq, what's happening in Libya and Syria. These are all signs of arrogance, big-headedness of certain people or, or certain nations and certain groups that then leads to so much destruction and, 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 and uh, devastation of people's lives. Okay, I hope you can see that when the Quran uses these words, they are really composite of many things, yeah, no? Uh, so, you know, so here, you know, we've learned that these new Ten Commandments are really amazing way of restoring peace and restoring that broken relationship 
of between human beings and Allah, between human beings within themselves, you know, we have these broken, the way to heal them is to follow those 10 amazing commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be Allah's, be your parents, be the people, people's person. Okay, that's what it really means, those three things first. And then avoid these seven deadly sins that will rot your soul, destroy your heart and mind. Yeah, no? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. I hope you will all read, you know, these beautiful ten commandments from verse 22 to 36.